In this segment, we're going to talk about so-called task-oriented dialogue. This is departing pretty substantially from the chatbot ideas we were seeing before, because now we're going to be talking to systems that are actually going to be trying to help us do something and not just carry on a conversation. So this comes back to ideas that we invoked at the very beginning of the course, um, you know, the idea of having a conversation with Siri. We often want to talk to these personal assistants or basically API front ends and ask questions like, you know, find me a good sushi restaurant in Chelsea. Um, and hopefully Siri would say something like Sushi Seki Chelsea is a sushi restaurant in Chelsea with 4.4 stars on Google. And you ask, and then you can ask follow-up questions like how expensive is it? Uh, entrees are around $30 each. And then you might say, find me something cheaper. So th th this is obviously very different than the chatbot setting in that if you f throw this into one of the chatbots, you know, m maybe there's some chance it would produce the name of a real restaurant, but uh, you know, it certainly wouldn't be able to accurately tell you what the prices are um, or be able to handle this idea of like actually doing a search for a cheaper restaurant. Um, and another another kind of domain that often gets talked about is customer service. So you know, if you want to talk to uh, Amazon and ask why your uh, order is not here. Um, ideally, you would be able to do this through Alexa. Um, and it would be able to say, okay, your order was scheduled to arrive at 4 p.m. And then you say it never came. And then, you know, it tries to figure, figure things out, right? So the, the kind of big difference here is that we actually need a model of what the user is trying to do. We need to back this up with real data, real databases, information about what the user's order was, rather than just kind of generating random crap to say from a language model. And plumbing all this together is going to require a lot of different ideas beyond what we saw in chatbots. So let's kind of look back at a little bit of a historical uh, view of this, people have been looking at this problem for a long time. Um, there was a uh, s kind of system d d d or, or interface developed at DARPA in the early 90s called ATIS, the Air Traffic Information System or Air Travel Information System, uh, where you have these questions uh, that you would ask on a phone, like how much is the cheapest flight from Boston to New York tomorrow morning? And so this is very domain specific. And so the system has two things. It has a goal or, or an intent. Um, and here in this case, the goal is airfare. I'm trying to tell you a price, right? Um, and then there are several fields that are effectively constraining a search. So the relative cost, you're looking for the cheapest, um, you know, and then the kind of parameters of the times and the places. So, we talked about these kind of QA tasks before in the context of semantic parsing. We looked at this GeoQuery data set. And we can think of this in the same kind of lambda calculus expression. Uh, and, and in fact, when, when thinking about ATIS, many people are, uh, you, you know, many, many, uh, many systems to it do treat it as a semantic parsing problem. But you can also view it as this, this kind of intent plus slot model. Um, and so uh, this is how a lot of task-oriented dialogue systems work is um, for ATIS, there's 29 different intents. For something like Amazon Alexa, there would be many, many more. Um, you know, and different questions will have be targeting different things, like which flights go from blah, blah, blah. It's supposed to give you flights. Um, you know, this is a question about ground service. This is a question about, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to get a day of the, a, a day name for what days of the week do flights from San Jose to Nashville fly on, um, or information about meals, right? So when you have a system like uh, Amazon Alexa and you talk to it, you know, what it will do is it will try to figure out what, uh, what sort of sub module it should use to answer your question. And so if you ask about setting an alarm, it has a set of intents and things like that uh, surrounding that domain. Okay, so what is this really kind of going on in the back end? So when you say find me a good sushi restaurant in Chelsea, there's really a couple different things. The first is this, uh, this kind of slot filling idea where we need to figure out, okay, we, we want a sushi restaurant and it want, we want it to be in Chelsea. Um, and then we need to actually invoke an API, right? We need to execute some kind of search here. And this is something that obviously didn't exist in the, uh, you know, in, in the chatbot world. 
And then we need to generate a response. And then when the user asks how expensive it is, we're, we're you know, doing some other kind of query on this and then uh, again, returning a response. So this, in, this, com this combines the idea of, of like intent classification and slot filling along with you know, having to actually dispatch stuff to an API and then generate a response that's going to be rendered to the user. And so a lot of times this generation is, is templated in these current systems. That's why you know, when you talk to one of these things, they'll often you know, use the same kind of phrasing for different queries, right? Okay, so there are a lot of ways of framing this, of thinking about how to build each of these pieces and plumb them all together. Um, I'm going to present to you one relatively new idea um, that is a little bit of a more sophisticated take on this process. Um, and it's an idea from a startup called Microsoft Semantic Machines. Uh, well, a startup called Semantic Machines that was acquired by Microsoft. And their idea is to formulate dialogue as what they call data flow graphs. So when you ask a question like, where is my meeting at two this afternoon? The graph produced here says, okay, we have 2 p.m. this time. And that, basically we're using that to try to, to, to try to find an event. And then we are going to get the place associated with that event. So this kind of takes this, this utterance and, and flexibly transforms it into this, uh, this data flow structure that is able to transform information the user gives, gives an input into the response. And the cool thing about these is that they can work in the context of a conversation as well. Um, so then if you ask, can you create a meeting with Megan right before that starts? What you're doing effectively is referencing this, all, this event that we already found. And so we ask, okay, when does that start? And then we have this string Megan that was passed in and we want to create an event with both that start time and also this Megan person. Um, but here's where the system can say, okay, I don't actually know who Megan is, right? Like this is one of the key features of dialogue, which is that you need to be able to ask things like clarifications. So then the system will say, uh, okay, which, which person named Megan did you mean? And uh, you know, the, the user will say Megan Bowen, and then now this, can, this computation can kind of go through and it will create the event. So the key bit here is that we can't just treat each of these things as a kind of one and done utterance or you know, semantic parse it and, and just execute it very easily. We need to be able to reference these earlier parts of the computation. Um, users also might want to do things like go back and revise things like, you know, actually I meant Megan, you know, someone else, and then you want to go back and be able to change the name. So you want to be able to edit parts of this graph as well. And so it's important to keep this whole thing kind of instantiated. Okay. How do we train these things? This is a topic that's kind of beyond the scope of this course. There's a, a huge literature about how to you know, build and train models that look like this and, and look like many other things. Um, a lot of it looks roughly like learning from demonstrations. Um, this is the so-called Wizard of Oz paradigm, uh, where you basically have someone who is manually pulling the levers on the back end of the dialogue system and you're using that to collect training data. So when a user says, find me a good sushi restaurant in Chelsea, that response will get dispatched either kind of live on the fly or you know, this data collection would happen static offline in advance. Um, some operator of the system would kind of type in all this information, indicate, okay, they're looking for a sushi restaurant in Chelsea and now I need to do a search. Um, and then for the generation piece of it, they're either kind of typing out a free form response or using, like again, sort of pulling some levers behind the scenes to get the system to, uh, you know, say the response with some particular template. All right, and this gives you supervised learning data that you can use to, uh, to basically predict what to do in the context of any given utterance. Okay, so there's, you could, I mean, you really could do an entire course on dialogue systems and task-oriented dialogue. There's so much in this space and it really encapsulates 
in many ways, all of the problems we've seen so far, um, you know, parsing, generation, all this kind of stuff, you know, entity recognition. Um, so there's a lot here. There's a lot of industry in interest and a lot of the kind of drivers of this are industry players. Uh, so, you know, there's just a list of a few of those here. It's really a, a kind of very active area where a lot of the best stuff that's out there probably isn't public yet, or we don't really know how it works. Um, so, you know, I guess keep your eyes peeled and, and uh, watch for stuff happening in this space. But other, otherwise, you know, it's one of the uh, kind of one of the big open problems that, that people are thinking about is how to build really compelling systems that work really well for problems like this. That's the end of this segment.